This video will look at how to set up the WinLink email service on an amateur radio emergency data network. WinLink is already familiar to amateur operators who are providing emergency communication, and it makes sense to use a familiar program like this over a high-speed data network like Arden. Let's get into some details. There are many different email type services that could be used over a high-speed off-grid data network like Arden, so why WinLink 2000? The reason WinLink is so familiar to MCOMS folks is because it's so widely used and accepted as one of the primary methods of emergency communication worldwide. It's proven itself to be very robust and reliable in every situation. WinLink is also versatile. It provides email messaging with attachments such as documents and images. It's used for sending position reports and weather bulletins. And it can operate over different communication paths, including almost any type of radio link, as well as over TCP IP networks and the internet itself if it's available. WinLink has a wide range of useful features. But in this video, I'll focus on only one small aspect of the software to explain why you might want to use it on your Arden network. What we want to do here is to make this familiar email system available as a service on an off-grid high-speed data network, which might not have access to other radio delivery options or to the internet. Since WinLink is so versatile, we can use it for a range of message types. We can exchange short chat or text messages, but we can also transfer detailed messages with complex attachments like documents or images. This gives us a lot of flexibility to provide whatever type of message traffic is needed. The store and forward architecture of an email system is ideal for situations when operators might not be available at the same time, or they may not even have their stations connected all the time. The system will store messages and then forward them to the correct destinations when stations become available. The feature of WinLink that we'll use here is called peer-to-peer -peer messaging, often abbreviated P2P. You could think of this as providing a serverless email service. Email systems typically use a client-server architecture. So remote or distributed clients will send messages through a central server which acts like a communication router or broker to deliver messages to the correct destinations. This means that the server needs to be available online in order for message traffic to be delivered. It also means that the communication path will be longer because the message has to pass over the network links to get to the server before finally traveling to the destination. WinLink's peer-to-peer -peer feature allows message traffic to go directly between the sending and receiving stations. It's analogous to using direct IP-to-IP -IP dialing of VoIP phones, which can eliminate the dependency for having a PBX server to manage the conversation. WinLink P2P will have the effect of reducing the number of hops in the communication path which can decrease the amount of bandwidth used for message traffic. There are several WinLink client programs that you could use to accomplish these goals. In this video, I'm going to use the PAT WinLink client software. One of the main reasons is that it's available for almost any operating system that might be running on the computers connected to a mesh network. There are PAT WinLink installers for Windows, Mac, and Linux, which includes the popular Raspberry Pi computers. It provides a command line interface as well as an intuitive web-based graphical user interface. PAT does not have some of the more sophisticated features of the WinLink Express client for Windows, such as templates and fillable forms but it does include all of the messaging features you typically need for emergency email communication. We'll share more about these features shortly. 
There are several excellent video tutorials for downloading and installing Pat Winlink, so I'm not going to cover that here. I would highly recommend that you visit the URL shown here and have Jason, KM4ACK, walk you through the process of getting Pat Winlink installed on your computer. The examples I'll be sharing in this video will use a Linux computer that's connected to the LAN network on one of my Arden nodes. Similar steps also apply for Windows and Mac computers. Once you have Pat Winlink installed, you'll need to edit the configuration file using your favorite text editor on your computer. The config.json file is typically found in the WL2K directory, and it's formatted as a set of key-value pairs using standard JSON syntax. There are two things that I want Pat Winlink to do for me behind the scenes. First, I want the Winlink web GUI to run on an available port on my computer. The reason I'm bringing this up is that many mesh services computers already have a web server running for other purposes. In my case, this computer already is using both of the typical HTTP ports, ports 80 and 8080, so I need to have Pat run its web GUI on a different port. I've chosen port 8222 for web connections to my Pat Winlink interface and I've entered the IP address of this computer along with port 8222 for the web GUI. The second thing I want is for Pat Winlink to listen for P2P connections from other stations on the network. I need to set the listen value to Telnet, which tells Pat to run the Telnet listener continuously. And then in the Telnet section below that, I enter the IP address of this computer along with the port number that I want to use for the Telnet listener. Again, choose an unused port on your computer for this listener. I've selected port 8774 for my Telnet listener. Finally, I also want my computer to start Pat Winlink automatically so that it runs continuously on my Arden network computer. This is a straightforward task on Linux and the steps are described in the Pat documentation at the URL shown here. Similar steps could also be implemented on Windows and Mac computers. Once those post-install steps have been accomplished, I can verify that all the required pieces of Pat Winlink are running on my computer. This example uses a Linux computer, but similar steps could be done on Windows or Mac computers too. Since I used the systemd unit file that was included with Pat Winlink, I can verify that the service is running by typing System control, system CTL space, status space, and then the name of the service, which in my case is PAT with the at sign and then my call sign. The output of that tells me that the service is enabled and that it's actively running. And then toward the bottom of the list, I can see that both the Telnet listener and the web GUI are running at the correct ports. If I wanted to go one step further, I could also use the Netstat program to verify that this computer's definitely offering Pat Winlink services to other computers on the network using ports 8222 and 8774. Now I can verify that the web URL I created really will allow me to access the Pat Winlink GUI. If all is well, then I see the web interface, which shows my call sign and the status of the Telnet listener in the upper left corner. You'll also see the menu bar items that allow you to view the inbox, the outbox, the sent messages, and any archived messages. On the right side of the menu bar is a drop-down menu for making connections and composing messages. To compose a new message, click Compose, and a pop-up window lets you enter one or more call signs to receive the message. 
enter a meaningful subject line, and then be sure to check the P2P only checkbox to ensure that your email will use the Arden Mesh network to transfer the message directly to the destination station. Type the body of your message and add any file attachments that you need to send. When you click the post button, this message will be stored in your outbox where it will wait for a connection between your station and the destination. You can connect to other stations on demand, which is helpful when you want to transfer your messages immediately. From the Actions menu, click Connect. Select Telnet as the transport and WL2K as the target. In the address field, you'll need to enter the connect string for the remote client that you're trying to connect to. We'll share more about connect strings shortly, but in my case, I already have an alias that's defined for this destination station, so I'll select it from the drop-down list. When you click the connect button, you should see activity in the log window at the bottom of the display. This shows you whether your connection was successful, along with details about the message transfer. You can check your outbox to see that the waiting message is gone, and it will now appear in your sent messages list. You can also check your inbox to view any incoming messages that were received from this connection. When you enter a connect string, you need to specify your call sign so the remote system knows which messages to transfer to your station. You also need to enter the IP address of the remote station on the Arden network, as well as the port for that station's Telnet listener. Use the field separator characters that are shown in this example when you type your connect strings. It would be nice to have Pat Winlink check other stations automatically on a scheduled basis for any new messages that are ready to be transferred. You can use your computer's scheduled tasks program to accomplish this. On Linux, you can use the CronTab facility. In the example shown here, I'm editing my cron table to add entries for checking three other Winlink stations on my Arden network. I decided to check each station every five minutes, but to offset the time so that not all stations are being pulled simultaneously. As we saw earlier, once a connection is made, then any stored messages will be transferred both ways across that link. Let's highlight the main points covered in this video. By using WinLink P2P, we can implement what you might call a serverless email service. This delivery method will reduce the number of network hops and it will minimize the bandwidth that's used for messaging. Email's store and forward architecture guarantees reliable message delivery even when the sender and the receiver are not at their stations or even connected to the network at the same time. Pat Winlink's web-based user interface provides access to the email system from any of the LAN-connected mesh computers without having to install any client software on them. Messages can be transferred on demand as well as on a scheduled basis. Thanks very much for watching. I hope that this information will be helpful as you implement a serverless email service for your Arden Mesh Network.